Okay, hi there and welcome to a short video looking at the economics and the significance of something called global value chains. So what are global value chains? Well, globalization has allowed businesses to unbundle production into tasks performed at different locations around the world to take advantage of different factor costs. So instead of a product usually in the past having been made in just one country, that has changed fundamentally. A global value chain is where a single finished product is the result of extraction, refining, manufacturing, assembly, logistics, retail across many different countries. Each step in the process adds value to the end product, ultimately, of course, bought and consumed. Now, globalization is key to understanding this because many companies, businesses have restructured their supply and production through outsourcing and through offshoring. And essentially, firms now have the capability to optimize production by locating across the various production stages from country to country. For very complex products, components come from a wide range of countries and continents and that makes it actually quite hard to measure the value of trade between countries. If you get a question on globalization, global value chains have become absolutely key to understanding modern manufacturing. It doesn't necessarily have to be a complex product. This is the famous example of the jar of Nutella. You know, a simple chocolate spread has a value chain which goes from Turkey and Malaysia, Australia, Brazil, Argentina, Italy and France and other countries beside it. A simple jar of a chocolate spread can be sourced from many, many different countries. Perhaps the favourite example that students like to use at the moment is the ubiquitous iPhone. Uh, Apple has a, a huge global supply network. It depends heavily on outside manufacturers to produce ready-made components, which are finally assembled and then obviously sold in markets across the world. Apple's supply chain has, on the latest estimates, suppliers in nearly 50 countries and six continents. Many of those are actually extractive, of course. So the, the typical smartphone uses between 60 and 70 elements from the periodic table of elements. So the iPhone that you buy or purchase or use or something similar is a result of a very complex value chain, a global supply and value chain. Now, what are the advantages? What are the advantages of particularly emerging countries joining those global value chains? Well, one is that you can join a chain instead of having to build it. So an existing supply chain, if you have some capability and some capacity, ideally you can then use your cost advantage or locational advantage to join an existing supply chain. You don't necessarily have to go ham on tongs to gain a, a comparative and competitive advantage in every stage of production. You specialise in the stage of production that you're best at. Many economists actually think that the global supply chain process, in theory, can help to fast forward industrialization and modernization. You don't need to supply the entire product. You focus on different stages of production. So this could be a fast track, if you like, to industrialization. Um, and if you get it right, if you can build successfully into global supply chains, then that can lift productivity, in part ideas and know-how are, are shared. Uh, more formal employment, for example, in manufacturing, lifts per capita incomes and savings. It increases profits and tax revenues for participating countries and companies. So in theory, there are advantages if you can lock yourself into a supply chain for a fast growing product. However, there are, of course, some disadvantages. And this leads neatly to some of the, the risks and the drawbacks from globalization. Not A lot of research has been done on global value chains. It's a fairly new area of economics. But some of the evidence that I've seen suggests that global supply chains, value chains, tend to favour transnational corporations in developed, advanced, rich nations. They tend to gain most from outsourcing via, uh, via lower costs, which ultimately leads to higher profits. And again, at the moment, uh, in part because many low-income countries don't necessarily have the human capital and the capabilities 
they tend to stay heavily involved at lower value added stages of production extraction basic processing basic refining rather than the later stages of production the biggest profits the biggest markups tend to be at the retail stage where you add a brand name to the product you may well have studied and revised monopsony power as part of your available and of course the significant buying power of multinationals can lower the value added going to supply businesses in the supply chain and that brings down the, the pay and the real incomes and the living standards of people in economically less developed countries and a world of complexity and interconnectedness interdependence global supply chains they can and do get disrupted economic external shocks political shocks who knows extreme climate can may well threaten global supply chains and the investment from transnational corporations is often footloose and can clearly change quickly that's a risk to countries that are dependent on inward investment so whilst participation in global value chains can increase productivity and income it's not automatic that this is beneficial to lower less developed countries if you like the crucial part from my point of view just a couple of slides to finish is how to build value added for developing countries i follow james hall on twitter he is quite fantastic the reuters correspondent he has a twitter feed called called hall about africa oftentimes he picks up some great examples of industries where things are happening but there's a growth and development perspective to highlight on the left hand side here south africa is becoming a major world exporter now of citrus of orange of orange projects um, products are uh, uh, clearly a, a, a growth and development success story there and has great potential however and they're shipping lemons oranges grapefruits to more than 100 different countries but the crucial thing is whether they get the true value added from these products uh, are they putting their own brand names on the products in which case they can they can get more of the value added or are they just growing and processing and then distributing and likewise on the right hand side China increasing investment in man in Africa in manufacturing. James is arguing that if China is going to be doing more manufacturing, uh, governments must insist that African workers are trained. The human capital of the local labour force is uh, benefiting because human capital capability in a world of complexity is the key to to being able to offer more value added to the production process. I think the one of the great stories at the moment in terms of globalization is the emergence of significant brands from countries such as china and korea and india so whatever it is alibaba or tencent or huawei from china samsung lg uh, kia motors from south korea tata infosys uh, reliance from india globally scaled businesses that add value through their own supply chains are really crucial to driving and lifting the growth performance of these countries in a globalized world well hopefully this this helped just basically cement with you the idea of what a global value chain is it's an important concept to use when writing about trade about globalization and about growth and development thank you <music>